Hey guys, welcome to the podcast and the videos. As always, we are keeping them very basic, very simple, quick recording, upload, no editing, nothing fancy. It's just about getting out as much information and content to you as possible. And I really hope that it helps. Yesterday, I spoke to you guys about pain and using pain as a tool. And in that, I mentioned what happens when we know something, but we feel something different. And that's what I'd just like to chat to you about today, because many years of being sober, being sober currently, as of today, for over 14 years. And October 21st, 26th, around about there, 2021, will be 15 years of being sober. And people in the rooms or in recovery talk about clean and serene. And I never understood the serene part. I didn't get serenity. I never had serenity. I was sober. I was building a life. I was moving forward. I was finding that I was stronger and stronger in overcoming challenges. The more challenges that I overcame, the stronger I found I was becoming at overcoming challenges. And um, it's like learning to ride a more and more complicated bicycle, I suppose. We got to do the basics, <coughs> excuse me, all of the, um, the pain that we go through gives us the strength for the next set of pain to go through that and that's why we have to keep going through that and when I'm saying this I'm thinking to myself and I'm feeling this is also something else to talk about what I wanted to talk about today though is that serenity and I think I found it guys I think I gained an understanding into it and I gained an understanding that improved the quality of my life and that comes down to what we feel and what we think when that is the same thing. And I'm not talking about a greeting card type of, you know, when your thoughts and feelings are aligned, you know, that's honestly who you are. And, you know, I think life is a lot more complicated than that. What I wanted to talk about was when we know that we're a good person, we think we're good. We think we're valuable. We think we're worthy. We think that we're worthy and deserving of kindness, of compassion, of love, that we do deserve to be loved, that we deserve to have people treat us with kindness, that we deserve to have people see us for who we really are and not perhaps as a thing or an object that we deserve to have our days going smoothly, that our businesses deserve to be successful, our family life deserves to be easy, our friendships, we deserve friendships. All of these things that we can think and logically understand and know in our heads, yeah, that's right, I'm a good person. For me it was, I'm a good person, I deserve recovery. But I didn't believe that. I didn't feel that I was good. I didn't feel that I deserved recovery. I didn't feel that I deserved to stop drinking. I knew that I had to, but I didn't feel that I could, or rather that I deserved to. And we have many challenges in recovery and people talk about relapse I, I don't believe in relapse and I get into many many intense powerful discussions with people in the recovery community about that and how can you not say that how can you say that um, you know it's just a flat tire on the route to sobriety um, it's a bump in the road it's a oil change <laughs> I believe that when we deserve or I believe that when we believe we deserve to recover that's when we recover 
Everything else is just going through the motions. Telling yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah just I'll be sober. I'm fine. I can deal with it. But sober's hard. Life is hard. Life is incredibly challenging. And until we believe, until we believe that we deserve what's on the other side of those challenges, they're nearly impossible. What keeps us going through the pain and the difficulty is the belief that we deserve to be on the other side. The belief that it's warranted that we be on the other side. The belief that we're good enough. The belief that we're good enough to be loved, to be valued, to be cared for. In a relationship, in a marriage, in work, in our personal lives, we have to believe. But sometimes, and very often, we don't. I didn't for a long time. I didn't believe I was a good person. I didn't believe that I deserved to be sober. I didn't believe that I had any value. I believed I was a thing, a thing for people to use. I believed that I didn't have any worth or value and that people could do with me as they pleased because those were the lessons that I learned as a child. So I perpetuated those lessons in my life. I sought relationships at work where people took advantage of me. I sacrificed myself for that. I sacrificed myself for love. I sacrificed myself for the hope of being loved. And none of those relationships, work, personal, social, were successful. They certainly didn't serve me. They certainly didn't help me. They perpetuated what I believed about myself, what I knew about myself. And I kept telling myself, I'm a good person. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be cared for. But I didn't believe it. So what happened? My life came to a point with having put a gun in my mouth several times and asking God to give me the courage to kill myself because I couldn't carry on and the drinking had stopped working. But I never pulled that trigger. And I got to a point where I got called into work and my bosses said to me, do you have a drinking problem? And my life came down to such a simple moment of living or dying. And I didn't want to die. I didn't want to die. Whew. Doesn't matter how many times I tell this story, but it hits me every time and in different in <coughs> excuse me, in different intensities each time, and it's clapped me now. Because I know many of us are feeling that. That we can't carry on, but we don't want to die, but we don't know another way out. And maybe dying would be easier. But the thing is, suicide is a very permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I'm sitting in front of you today as proof of that. So they said to me, do you want help? Sorry, first I said, do you have a drinking problem? And I knew if I said no, I would have been fired and I would have been dead within six months. I would have drunk myself to death. I would have killed myself in a car accident or I would have shot myself. I would have put my gun in my mouth and pulled the trigger blown the back of my head off and I didn't want that I just wanted to live and I didn't know how so they said to me then after I said yes I have a drinking problem they said do you want help and I said please and they booked me into an appointment with Dan Wolf who ran a treatment program called First Step incredibly apt and I sat with Dan the next day for an hour. And after that hour, he said to me, Nicholas, you are an alcoholic. You start the program on Monday. Monday, 
walked into my first meeting. And the greatest gift that I gave myself, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys tonight, the gift I gave myself was very simple. I sat in my car in my three-piece suit at 120 plus kilos, sweating and terrified before going into the meeting. Saw all the guys sitting up at the top of the path um, by the house, drinking coffee and smoking and laughing. And I was terrified because at first I'm a very, very shy person. I had to walk into this room. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no clue what I was going to do. And then it came to me, and this is the gift. I said to myself, I'm going to shut up and do whatever the hell they tell me. Because they know better than I do. They know better than me. Apparently, that's called surrender. What I had done, and I, this, this, come, this is why I love talking and sharing and putting out this content for you guys. The, the incredible means that I have to share my thoughts, my lessons, and my feelings, and my experiences with you guys. So then some small way that they can help. That thought, that moment of surrender, of I will do whatever the hell they tell me. I will shut up and do as I'm told. That was the gift because what it was is suddenly someone telling me I'm worth it. Even though I didn't believe, in, believe it. Telling me I deserve recovery even though I didn't believe it. Telling me that I'm worthy of love even though I didn't believe it. Telling me that I'm a good person even though I did not believe it. I gave up. I gave up trusting myself. I gave up listening to myself. I gave up listening to the voices in my head that told me I was none of the things I desperately wanted to be. I handed that over to another, to my sponsors, my counselors, my therapists, people who had been in the rooms in recovery for longer than I had. I shut up and did whatever I was told. I went looking for mentors, for people I knew that I could trust and value their opinion. And that would be honest with me because my thoughts were not honest with myself. I told myself lies. Lies based on lies things that I thought about myself and lessons that I'd learned as a child that were giving me false information. So until you can believe the wonderful things about yourself, that you are a good person, that you deserve love, that you deserve success, that you deserve peace, that you deserve serenity. Until you can overcome those voices that tell you you don't, surrender that thought process and find a mentor, a sponsor, a group that you can trust and that tell you the truth. Because we don't always and we shouldn't always believe what we think. Find and surround yourself with people that tell you the truth about how good you are, how valuable you are, how powerful you are, how amazing and capable you are. We find ourselves in a world that is tearing itself apart. And we're getting hammered again and again and again. But we can get through it. Because we've already survived so much. What we have been through is proof that we can get through. Think about that. What we have been through is proof that we can get through. And until you believe that you deserve to get through. That you're worthy of everything you want to set your heart on. 
those dreams you had when you were four and five so you can believe that you deserve them surrender that belief to those who will tell you the truth thank you guys i love you all Oh,